Africa's got the greatest number and diversity of, of large mammals. It's the continent that's been blessed with the most wildlife. Many of these animals, like the black rhino, they're down to a few thousand. This is it. In the next hundred years, years make or break, and every animal counts. Each immobilization, each animal I work with, is a quite a potent tranquilizer. From seeing the animal to putting a dart in, I'd be pleased maximum a minute and, and, and preferably less than that. A black rhino is in many ways an animal that want to be left alone. Those are the ones most likely to be poached, most difficult to monitor, and having a helicopter has made all the difference. It simplifies the work very much, simply because you can cover a big distance in a short period of time and they reach areas that we would haven't reached when we were to use the vehicle. Pete is a real pioneer in any of the more dangerous or more difficult uh, game capture operations like we're doing here. The whole thing is to work as quickly as possible. Get the job done, get out again. I'm going to spend probably about a minute or two just being comfortable. This animal is okay. It's breathing well. This animal is stable. We can now move on and start doing other stuff to it. So that's, that's, that's number one. Position of the animal is important. We tend to put it on the side. Pump those legs, make sure there's, there's good circulation to the legs. Douse it with water a few times, keep it wet. Each person has their own job. Focusing on just stabilizing the animal and then the, the horn implants. Uh, usually there's been a second or even a third vet. One vet will then focus on taking samples and the other vet will focus on monitoring the animal the animals are fully immobilized. We're using an opioid, which is a very powerful painkiller. The part of the horn that we drill to put in the gadgets is composed of dead cells, so the animal cannot feel pain. We drill a hole into the horn for the actual transmitter, and then we'll drill a long hole from the top uh, to put the antenna. And we fill up the hole with dental acrylic dye or we'll put something with it to make it the same colour as rhino horn, so if the animal is poached and the horn is taken, you wouldn't easily realise that there's a, there's a transmitter in that horn. And when we give the antidote, suddenly that animal is awake again. You can see it's very, it's very, very spectacular, and within about a minute and a half, the animal will be on its feet. When you know that the job's been done, the animal's fine, one feels really good. Knowing where that animal is means you can keep an eye on it and make sure that it's healthy, it's not being poached. Horn from animals which have been poached has certainly been tracked down and the folk who've been involved, either the poachers or the middlemen, have been caught. Supporting TANAPA uh, and supporting you know, other organizations like Frankfurt, making sure it's well managed, the wildlife is well protected. TANAPA is very important to secure the landscape, to secure the ecosystem. That is the biggest challenge over the next 10 years. I also very much enjoy working in Africa with uh, African people a wonderful team to work with, to see how they go forward and how enthusiastic they are uh, to conserve as well. My parents, I'm very proud to get involved in protecting uh, these resources that Tanzania have. A big chunk of the Serengeti is that much safer by, by their involvement. The Friedkin Conservation Fund, which we have here under, under Dan Friedkin, is a great pilot. He's clearly very passionate about conservation. He's very passionate about um, Tanzania and the Serengeti, particularly with this operation. They've been uh, giving us helicopter time. That's made all the difference. It's the first time, essentially, we've really had the helicopter here to do the Rhino program. Boy, what a difference. We need the future generation, including my children, to see these animals and um, get to understand them and they continue the work to conserve them that we have been doing.
I'd love to say young folk out there who are looking for something to do, who feel a passion for conservation, get involved, you know. This is the time to really save our environment.